we finally made it here the interview is about to go down and it's been a it's been a long journey very busy yeah you know what i mean things have been going on where we haven't been able to get here in this space and in this space i mean i've been wanting to get this done for a while um hey my we brand family i'm gonna let this guy introduce himself to you all and we're gonna get right into it today you already know what time it is you guys these are the ceo right here at we brand and this is the photography experience what's going on y'all my name is eddie platt i am an atlanta native caricature artist and illustrator uh been doing art for a long time i mean i've been drawing since i was like four years old but as far as the professional art thing i've been a caricature artist for six years uh, dabbled on and off in illustration since I graduated from the Art Institute of Atlanta and um, I managed to make it all the way to being able to do this full time and I love it. I love every second of it. Mm. What I love to do. Mm. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Look, you said you've been doing this since four years old? You said drawing since four years old. Yeah, I've been okay. drawing since four years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. so what got you What got you in the drawing in general? I mean, I'm not really sure exactly what got me into it in general, but I just remember you know, sitting in uh, kindergarten, drawing the assignments and stuff like right. that. Teachers was always praising how good the drawings were and right, stuff. Right, right. Next thing you know, I'm in third grade and I'm drawing, you know, my favorite video game characters and comic book characters in class instead of paying attention to class. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Typical and, us creatives. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and it just continued on from there. And, you know, from, I want to say that point on, I, I knew I wanted to pursue the arts somehow. Right. I didn't know how I was gonna do it at that time because I was right, know, right, right. Great. But you know what I mean? For sure. It was definitely a calling at that point. Right. Did you have like peers who was into the arts or was it just like was you like the lone wolf? You know what um, I mean? My parents weren't into the arts per se, um, but I do have, you know, creatives in my family. Mm -hmm. um, I do have, you know, some family members aside from myself who were in the arts and stuff that were more extended family. Mm -hmm. um, I did do a lot of um, art projects and stuff like that with some of my cousins around the time. You know, right. it was some cousins that I had who also were into drawing and stuff and they fell out of it, you know, because they had other stuff going on in their lives. But that was motivation for me to keep going. And, um, you know, my grandfather actually, um, was a uh, carpenter, mm. he was an entrepreneur, plumber, you know, my, my dad's father is, um, was like, I guess out of all of us, like he was the highlight business person in right, our right. family. So, okay. you know, when you go down my dad's side of the family, you run into a lot of entrepreneurs mm. and that entrepreneurial mindset. So that even kicked in. That was something that I didn't even really think about until I started my business and I was like, dang, I'm doing what my granddad did. Right, you know I mean? right, so, right, right. So it's in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in some you. ways, I think so. Yeah, yeah. it's in you. And and probably those little subtle nuances of what you saw when you was young. Mm -hmm. You didn't realize how impactful it was until you got into your own art. Yeah. And your own creativity. Yeah, I could, I could see that too. Because, I mean, that's kind of like how I was when I was young as well. Yeah. Certain things, certain paths I took in life, where when I look back at it, I'm like, oh, snap. That's how grandma used to move. Yeah. That's how my cousin used to move. Yeah. That's how, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah, I think it's a, we're in a time where it's in full circle, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I mean, now the more and more that I do this, I think about my kid too, because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it, with, I don't need him to take up the arts, but I want him to know mm -hmm. that there's an entrepreneurial spirit and entrepreneurial yeah. lineage in our family. Right. You know? So that way, whatever right. he wants to go do, he can do his own thing. And I think that's the importance of creativity in general, whether it's about, you know, being a visual artist, being a photographer, you know, being a musician, you know, any outlet of creative expression, that's that's what allows us to build our own and solve, you know, problems within mm -hmm. our media culture, within our communities and, you know, get into the bigger worldview. Right, know? right, for sure, for sure. That's what's up. Where, so you say you from Atlanta? Born and raised. Born and raised in Atlanta. You never went anywhere else? I've never lived anywhere else, but I've been to a lot of places. Right. I've definitely, um, um, especially when I started doing caricatures, I traveled all over the East Coast and the Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got the chance to be in different cities and I wasn't there as a tourist, I was there as a worker. Oh, so okay. I got to experience the culture right. of being in these different places as if I lived there because right, I was right. working in that town and I was interacting with people from that working standpoint. It changes things a lot. Right. For sure. from, my, from my perspective. For sure. No, absolutely. I mean, being culture is not just about being where you're from. You know what I mean? You got to understand the other walks of life, the other colors, the other expressions. Like I'm a Jersey guy. When I moved to Florida, the sky is different. Yes. 
the the water is different. Yeah. The way people dress are different. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now my experiences are different. You ever been like I don't mean Midwest like the easy state like Texas. You ever been like the Great Plains, like the real Great Plains? No, not moving around. The most right. I've the most I've done West Coast is LA. You think the sky is different in Florida, bro? Like you <laughs> go to like Kansas or right. the Dakotas. Oh yeah, I hear. I mean, I hear. the sky is like the ceiling. It's like right. It's that low. It mm. just it's so wide open. There's there's nothing. It's nothing. Wow. It's just land and sky. And wow. That's it. And the sky sits so low. It's almost like you can reach up and just touch the clouds. Wow. It's different. And you know, so one of the things that I enjoyed about you know traveling around and doing this was being able to see parts of the country that I never thought I'd be able to see at all. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you know, being from out of like who's lived in Atlanta, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm around trees all the time and these big giant forests and then you go out to you know north dakota or south dakota and it's just grass you right know what i'm saying you might have like one tree over there like three trees over there a couple of rocks <laughs> right and it's just grass right and it's like it's different it's just you I've never see something like that before in my life you know but that's and, pretty awesome though pretty yeah awesome. yeah and you meet people out there who um you know i've met people in, in those states who've never seen water you know like the ocean right 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 saying? that's so, true that's true when you think about it you yeah. get to those mountains those type of areas you know what i mean like you're right you're absolutely right yeah in fact it's, it's like super crazy when you're going through like certain places like tennessee and different and you start seeing water coming out the side of the mountains and yeah, water coming yeah. out you're like dang like where i'm from you don't see nothing like that you know what i mean so yeah you know that's and i bet that adds to like your art and you know your presentation of art you know what i mean because you see things differently yeah oh but yeah you absolutely. come from an art city though mm -hmm. which people don't realize that atlanta is very much an art city i think that's definitely changed over the years i mean i saw an article uh maybe last year ago that said this was the most creative city now in the country mm. you know in terms of uh, being able to foster creativity to, to right. build a creative practice to practice creativity just in general right you know atlanta's really come a long way because right. when i was a kid um and when i was growing up into you know the college days and stuff like that the art scene was Chicago, mm. Philly. Like Philly was Philly, like the mural York, city. Yeah, you know sure. what I mean? Yeah, New York was all about street art, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Chicago was, you know, they had they had prestigious art schools up there that people went to and everything. And, you know, Atlanta back in those days wasn't talked about as much in the art scenes, but it was definitely there. Mm -hmm. It was a strong culture of art here. And I would honestly say, you know, even back in those days, I feel like Atlanta was probably a lot more tight knit in the art scene than it is now, mm. you know, because it was such a small scene. So it was right. real easy to meet a lot of figures who were very influential mm -hmm. in Atlanta scene, you know, back then because they were hanging out at coffee shops and right. organizing like sketchbook meetings and stuff right. like that. And Which I've never heard of. Yeah, yeah. People used to have sketchbook meetings. They used to have. Um, there was this one place, it's still uh, a place called Apache Cafe, but it's, it's different. It's not where it used to be. It used to be behind the varsity. Mm -hmm. um, there used to be a little building back there where the Apache Cafe sat, mm -hmm. and it was just a performative place. People came and they did spoken word. It was live bands that would come through there. Mm -hmm. They had their artist nights where, you know, they have like figure drawing uh, sessions and stuff like that. And artists would get together and draw. So it was very, very social. Right. at that time so it was a really connected time i would say now you know there's definitely more artistic stuff going on in the city but it's a lot more spread out right it's a lot more diverse um it's it's all a little bit more i don't want to say it's clickish because mm -hmm. it's not like you know it's one of those things where you, you're not welcome into this one area or that area right, right, right still right. very welcoming right but it's not as connected as it used to be probably because it's so broad now mm -hmm. you know 